So Los Angeles is funny. Uh, you know, I've been all over the world and usually when it rains, uh, if I get rained on, it cleans your car. But LA is the only place I know where when it rains, your car gets dirtier. I find that amusing. Okay, so here's the alley behind, you know, we're in the 4,000 block of Magnolia Boulevard and the plumber usually sets up shop here. I don't think he actually stays here during the day because, you know, when I've seen him a few times, he's been traveling around the city, but he always ends up back here. I don't know where he gets his money or food, but here he is. He's on Valley at Magnolia, just across the street from, uh, well, this is the 4400 block. So this is our first one for the night doing our census this gentleman is the plumber it's pretty pretty amazing I was uh, only the plumber tonight thus far and how much you want to bet right here at the bus stop at Hollywood Way and Magnolia there's gonna be two or three shopping carts indeed there's one there's two and there's three they just sit there nobody ever picks them up nobody reports them you know, if you're a manager at a place called Rite Aid, you would think that the manager would show up for work in the morning and go, you know what, these shopping carts don't belong here and they're not our shopping carts. Let's go ahead and make sure that the right person gets them. They don't do any such thing. They just don't care. Man, you know, it's, it's an interesting amount of apathy that we have with people working today. And I'm happy to call it in for them, I do, but the city's not really engaged on shopping cart retrieval. They just do it because it's a nuisance. But the people that actually are responsible, you know, let their carts walk off their property. And if I was a manager at a, a big company like Walmart, a lot of these carts are Walmart carts, I would have security checking all the time at the parking lot. Now I'm at Whitnell Highway Park South. I see a man here. I don't know who he is. I guess he's not the homeless guy I saw last night. I don't see anybody sleeping. Just a couple people enjoying the park. Technically, 10 p.m. is the cutoff for public parks, but you know, people curb their dog over here. Anyway, I don't know if they enforce those rules, but it's like 10 to sunrise. But I didn't see a sleeper. You know, so, yeah, last night I saw a guy sleeping at the at the park bench. This guy's he's curbing his dogs too. He's, giving them a nice little walk and yeah there's nobody here okay here's the beautiful Burbank water and power building let's check out Barney and then let's go down to the the old Americold building and see if we've got people sleeping down there tonight I've been down here repeatedly and it always seems like there's people down here so let's check it out uh, the guy that was over here is gone. He's not sleeping down here tonight. I still see the uh, tent. Uh, there's a pretty clean looking car here. Just locking my doors just in case. Uh, this is Air, you know, across the street from Aries Prepared Beef. This is Americold. And it's like an old, I guess it's an empty building now. But you got a guy here who's just camping and I don't know why the city isn't debating it and it's here in Barney you've also got right across the street Aries prepared beef I have no idea why they're not complaining and saying you know what's up with the the tent um, and that's that always shocks me and let's check this out see if we've still got the tent back here which we do all right the tent's still back here this hasn't moved yep so anyway just doing my nightly rounds just to see if all the usual folks are still hanging out and if they've moved or been offered help or whatever I'll be checking in on that and seeing it actually remarkably not a lot of people in Magnolia Park tonight um, not a lot you know and so it's interesting to me that it seems like just my presence just driving around and talking to people has 
gotten them to move along. I don't know where they're going to. I, you know, when you offer help to people and they say no, that's a little curious. Why would you say no to opportunities for housing? That's strange. All right, I'm going to make one loop up here and just see what's going on on Burbank Boulevard. And then that'll complete the census for tonight. Okay, I'm over here at uh, Buena Vista. I'm on Burbank Boulevard at Buena Vista. I see the man from last night, remember? He's just, it looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it's a different guy. Um, over here, we've got, um, looks like Carrie's here tonight. Yep, he's here, he's sleeping. Uh, so Carrie is here tonight. I wonder if 7-Eleven has become kind of the new hotspot for panhandling up here because for a long time it was over at Porto's but you know we were hanging out at Porto's often enough I think it probably discouraged panhandling because we informed the merchants there to call Street Plus and they did they started calling Street Plus and I think that the panhandlers wanted it to be left alone they didn't really want shelter they just wanted to keep buying their alcohol so here we've got uh, Carrie sleeping then we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi I don't actually think this is Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think this is a different guy. This is the guy who was up on Magnolia Boulevard the other day. And I'll check in with him and see if he needs help. All right. Yeah, I knew I'd run into this guy before. On September 23rd, we tried getting Brian Zach shelter, and he just refuses to, to be helped. He says that, you got money? This is Brian Christopher Zach. Brian Christopher Zach. Uh, I believe he's 30. No, he's 40. Gosh, I'm trying to remember how old he is. He's 47 years old, I think. He might be older, 47 or 48. Uh, somewhere around there, but anyway, Brian Zach toots around on his bicycle. I saw him the last time I saw him over at uh, uh, Brian Zach was over at the uh, Arc um, Arco over in Magnolia Park, and we called for assistance, but Brian Zach does not want to be helped. He keeps talking about people owing him disability, but he also, anytime we offered him assistance, he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and changes the subject you got money nice car you got there I'm like well it's a 20 year old car but it's not that nice but it's nice enough for me uh, Brian Zach doesn't want to be helped he just wants to smoke he's smoking I don't know what he's smoking it's not a cigarette it's something else and he's all he wants to do is smoke and panhandle and I get I'm guessing he's drinking but I haven't seen him drinking but he always looks kind of drunk um, the last time I saw him, he had he was scraping his arms and he had sores, which leads me to believe he does injectable drugs, but I'm not sure because I've never actually watched him shoot up. But, um, you know, if the guy can't seem to keep a, a normal conversation, you know, I, I mean, it's not a, it's not a, it's not an affordable housing problem. We've offered him housing. So Brian Zach is just, he needs a, he needs a conservatorship. He's been out here for a really long time. Okay, this is the Smart and Final. That's um, that's Chicago over there. And he is hanging out. I He is currently hanging out at the Smart and Final. All right, so this is Chicago. Chicago used to hang out in Magnolia Park every single afternoon, every single day. And then uh, people started complaining that he was walking into their stores and just you know glaring at them uh, Street Plus said he refused services he's refused services multiple times he does not want to leave the street I don't know what his story is but uh, he smokes weed in public and nobody seems to care uh, I'm sure if I find out who Chicago really is and we look him up in the computer he's probably got some some background but I don't want to assume that I'd like to actually do the background and check to see what his story is. Um, you know, Kerry has a long history. I just looked him up today. It was the first day. And he has a long history with meth and alcohol. 
and most of the people on the street with mental illness have some kind of drug component. I would like to help Chicago, but he doesn't want to be helped. He's not open to it. All right, I've located the Krabby Auntie. She's across the street from Liquor Palace. It's always going to be, you'll always see homeless. This is Krabby Auntie. That's her stuff. I recognize her stuff. She has, uh, she likes, she's fond of, I think it's two liter Sprites or sodas. But you'll notice that right across the street from Liquor Palace, we've got two homeless people. We've got Chicago and Krabby Auntie. And that's that's where they hang out. You know, you usually go to the liquor stores and you'll see them. Um, it's, it, you know, all, almost all the folks tonight, except the ones over by Varney, are all hanging out near a source of alcohol. Okay, I'm at the very end of the census. This is my last one because I've traveled all over. This is Ontario Street and Burbank Boulevard. This is the man I refer to as the mummy because you can never see his face. He wears some kind of toy, some kind of, you know, flower or something on his head. It's like a toy. He sleeps here and for some reason he sleeps in the area, but he, I don't see him during the day, but he, maybe he's hanging out on the bike. You know, he's got a bicycle. I don't see him during the day. I don't know what he's doing during the day, but that's the last person on the census for tonight. I don't see anybody else.